This question looks like it's gonna be crazy because it's a very long story, but it's basically just what is margin of error? If you understand that concept, do you understand that definition? This is really easy. I'm still gonna read it, but I'm gonna highlight where we actually hit important information. A company that produces socks wants to estimate the percent of the socks produced in a typical week that are defective. A random sample of 310 socks produced in a certain week were inspected. Based on the sample, it is estimated that 12% of all socks produced by the company in this week are defective with an associated margin of error of 3.62%. Based on the estimate and associated margin of error, which of the following is the most appropriate conclusion about all socks produced by the company during this week. So notice they're never asking us to kind of bring this 310 in. There are harder questions that could, but that's not really part of this. So what all we need to recognize is that what a margin of error is doing is it's taking our, our kind of average, our estimate, and it's adding and subtracting to kind of give us a range, right? Because when you do statistics, you might sample something and get a number as your average or whatever, but that doesn't mean that's the actual average of the entire population. Margin of error is accounting for that and saying our average in this sample may be off but it's, it's very unlikely to be more off than what this range is gonna do, more off than 3.62%. So we never have to calculate margin of error, they're just gonna give it to us, but we wanna basically find what's sometimes called a confidence interval around that central value. So what we would do is we would take the 12 and we would say, okay, well, let's do the 12 minus 3.62, let's do the 12 plus 3.62 and see what we get. Well, this one I can do easily, 15.62. This one, not so much, but I'm gonna assume it's 8.38, and you could use the calculator if you needed to, and that is why choice B is correct. It is plausible that between 8.38% and 15.62% of the socks are defective. Now, notice it doesn't say it is certain, because what these margin of errors usually do is give us like 95% certainty, but that still leaves room for it to be completely off. So plausible, what that technically means is it means likely or it means possible. And so there you go. We're, we're covering our bases. We are not getting anything definitive, but we are still getting a, a nice range that gives us some confidence in what we have. Now, the reason A is wrong is that they're just confusing margin of error with the concept of like the average. And so that doesn't really work. Um, C is wrong because margin of error exists. So to be very clear, 12% of the socks are defective in the sample. Right, so we took a sample of 310 socks from this entire factory. So 12% of those, whatever that is, are defective. But if we took another 310 socks, odds are that it wouldn't be another 12%. It would be somewhere between 8.38% and 15.62%. But when you keep taking samples, you're, you're rarely gonna get the exact same value every single time. That's why we take multiple samples and kind of have this margin of error to account for that, that disparity, those kinds of slight differences. Um, but C is what they're hoping you pick, right? They're hoping you just kind of read it. It's like, okay, it's just about what they found, but margin of error is going to widen that range. And then D, um, it is plausible that fifteen point, more than 15.62% of the socks are defective. Well, honestly, I think that that is kind of true, uh, but plausible means likely, and so it's not likely. It's not It's not likely to be the case that we have crazy number of socks uh, outside of our range that are defective, but it's possible. It is possible because maybe we just happened to pick a batch of 310 socks that were really, really, really good. And so if we had picked another 310, maybe we would realize, oh, actually, these socks are terrible. Um, this is a great example of a question where if you did get it wrong, you should get it wrong, you should get it right every single time from now on because you probably got it wrong just because you didn't understand the concept, you'd never heard it before, you never took statistics, but if you understand the definition here, that's usually all you're gonna need for an SAT question about margin of error.